So hello everyone. Good evening. Hello, good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. We are in another good session. Good evening. good evening. We are almost done with this course. And after this night, we are going to have just three more sessions and it's the end of the course. So we are going to begin because um, of the time. And yesterday we were talking about um, the some uh, grammatical structure. So we are going to share the screen to make a review of the topic that we were talking about yesterday. And you have already in your hands the information that we were uh, using in uh, these uh, sessions. Um, so we are going to see what are the topics that we were developing yesterday and we are going to continue today because it is not the end. We were seeing this information or this uh, structure of the present and we were saying the present continues and we have the specification for the present continues that is this one we have what is the uh, the present continues uh, what is the um also we were saying the formula for this present continues then we have some examples. Also, we were uh, seeing the uh, structure for the uh, positive, negative, and question. And now we are going to, let's see, we are going to continue from uh, this part. Now we are going to talk about the idiomatic expression and style. And it says that English can be very confusing. Uh, what is grammatically correct isn't always what you might hear in music, um, in advertisement, or during regular conversation. The present continuous is often used incorrectly. Consider the popular slogan of McDonald's. I don't know if, I, if we can uh, talk about the, the names of the brands, but in this case, uh, we have uh, this uh, phrase, and it says, I'm loving it, but we have this kind of sentence. I am loving and we have this it we have this phrase and in this case we are not uh, writing com uh, complete the phrase so it is grammatically incorrect uh, because to love is a stated verb so in this case we are not going to use this verb with this structure because we were saying yesterday that we have uh, two different kind of verbs. We have the uh, dynamic verbs and we have the uh, steady verbs. And in this case, this verb is talking about a feeling and it is a, a steady verb. So we are not using this kind of verb with this uh, structure. So um, why they use this kind of sentences when they are talking in English. And it says that uh, this marks a difference between the grammar and the style that using the present continuous to exaggerate is a, a stylistic or a stylistic trend. And as such, it will not be surprising to hear this conversation. We are going to write the example, but now let me explain something about this kind of things. So. We have this part that is the idiomatic expressions. And a style. Tenemos esta parte del idioma que eh, nosotros cuando estamos aprendiendo gramática se nos ponen una serie de reglas de la manera en la que vamos a hablar y utilizar las expresiones. En este caso estamos hablando de que en la música, en los comerciales eh, o incluso en las conversaciones comunes utilizamos frases que no están eh, correctas cuando hablamos de gramática. That's the example that we have eh, in the document that it says I'm loving it. ¿Por qué? Porque utilizamos el verbo love 
que ya hablábamos que los verbos que hablan sobre eh, sentimientos, pensamientos y todo eso no pueden utilizarse con esta estructura. Y en este caso sí lo están utilizando. ¿Por qué? Porque están exagerando. Están creando una exageración. So in that case, uh, they use this kind of sentences when they want to exaggerate something. So in that case, it's very complicated to understand English in, in that point because we are learning something different and they are creating something different. So uh, that's why it's very complicated to talk with someone that is native speaker because they are not going to use this kind of rules like we are going to do it. So because in some cases we can understand uh, very well what people are saying because they are creating another uh, sentences and uh, phrases and we are not using it like that. So we have another example and it says, a Scott glazed with a chocolate mustache. It looks over to his own and says, I'm loving me some of this chocolate peanut butter banana pancakes. I'm hearing what you're saying, she replies, a sprinkling powder sugar at top of the sack of the plate. So in this case, they are using the same sentence with this um, error because they are exaggerating the things that they want to say. And it says that here Scott and his aunt display their excitement. They are talking about excitement in a silly way because it is something funny, emphasizing their feelings. On the other hand, you will never hear a native speaker say this kind of sentence. Scott is loving his own Christine, a self-proclaimed pancake consigneur. People will simply say Scott loves his own Christine. So in native um, uh, native speakers, we are not going to use or we are not going to hear this uh, kind of sentence that are very, very specific uh, in which they are uh, following the rules because they are going to talk, they are going to communicate. And that's the main point of the language. But we are learning rules. We are learning to create sentence. We are learning to um, maybe pronounce uh, different words and uh, to uh, establish that relationship between the, uh, the verbs, the subject, the pronouns, the preposition, the, con the conjunction and all of that things. And we are very um, serious about the rules but they don't do that or they don't uh, speak like that. They just try to communicate and that's enough for them. So the final say, if you are teaching English or learning English, um, we have a recommendation that is simply sticking to grammatical correct construction and leaving the idiomatic expression to the creators of advertisements and some lyrics. In formal writing, the experts recommend that you, when you can use fewer words to express a thought, you should so use the present continuous sparingly, short and sweet can be beat. Si nosotros estamos eh, aprendiendo o enseñando inglés, nos recomiendan que no utilicemos estos idiomatic expressions, porque eso lo utilizan, ya decíamos, más que todo para los comerciales, para las letras de las canciones, y no lo podemos utilizar eh, nosotros porque no va a ser algo formal. So, if we are going to write something formal, we are going to be very precise um, and short with the information that we are given in that part. So now, we have the common construction in the present continuous tense. So we are going to add something like this. We have four and four. 
We have here the pronoun, that is the, the, the first thing. We have the pronoun, then we have the verb to be. Then we have the common dynamic verbs. And we have the present continuous construction. Present continuous construction. We are going to um, create something with these elements that we have here. We have the pronouns, we have the verb to be, we have the dynamic verb, and now we are going to create a sentence with those elements. So we have here, I, then we have he, she, it. This is something that we already know because they, they are the pronouns and we are using it for the sentences. Then we have we, you, they. Now we have the verb to be that corresponds to the pronoun. Um, is and are. Now we are going to add some uh, verbs to use with the present continuous construction. And we have to write, then we have to watch, and the last one to walk. Actions that we can perform in this kind of sentence. Then, we are going to transform these elements in a present continuous construction. And we have the number one. I am writing. Very, very simple. Number two, she is watching. And number three, they are walking. So that's the construction of the present continuous sentence. We are going to add the pronoun, the verb to be that corresponds to the pronoun. And we are going to uh, take the verb and we are going to transform adding the ing at the end of the verb. Esa es la construcción de eh, las oraciones en presente continuo. Vamos a necesitar obviamente el pronombre, que es nuestro sujeto de la oración, el verbo to be, que corresponde a cada uno de esos pronombres, y el verbo. En este caso tenemos el verbo en forma base, o infinity form, y lo vamos a transformar agregándole el ing al final para con convertirlo en continuous. And that's all that we need to do with this construction. Now we have common dynamic verbs that use the present continuous. Now we have three, nine, three and nine. We're going to add one more. And we have here three um, parts of this verb. We have the active verb. Then we have process verbs, and we have sense verbs. And in the active part, we have as, call, eat, help, hit, jump, look at, and play. In process verbs, we have change, 
we have brown, nature, arrive, and fall. <clears throat> in sense verse, we have feel. In this case, we have something specific. It is as in touch. That is like feel with our uh, feelings. In this case, it's feel with the hands, with the touch. Then we have heart. And we have this one. That we can use in the phrase like stomach that is talking about the pain. So we have, this is a, the common dynamic verb that we can use in the present continuous. So we have some examples of the common stated verbs that we not use in the present continuous. Because we know that we can use this kind of verbs with this structure. So in this case, we are going to see what are these verbs that um, that the, the present continuous is not going to use because of um, we need to have or, or mark this kind of verb because we are going to create this kind of sentences and we need to know what are the verbs that we are not going to use with this uh, structure. So we have three parts and we have five. We have in the first part, opinion verbs. In the second one, we have ownership verbs. In the third part, we have emotion verbs. And we have the examples. Deserve. Know. Recognize. And understand. For ownership's verb, we have own. Belong. Need possess. And for emotion verb, we have feel. In this case, we have feel. Um, but in this, it's talking about emotion, something about feelings, something that I can not see. And in the sense verb, we have feel, but in that case, it's something that I can touch. That is the difference. And in el primero de los eh, dynamic verbs tenemos feel, sentir, pero en este caso estamos haciendo una acción, estamos sintiendo con eh, el sentido del tacto, con la piel, con las manos. Y en emotion verbs, en el stated verbs, tenemos feel, pero en este caso es de sentir con las emociones. Siento eh, amor, siento decepción, siento tristeza. In that case, we are not going to use this kind of verb because we are not touching it. We are feeling it with our, uh, maybe our mind, our heart, or something like that. Así que tenemos que ser bien cuidadosos con el verbo feel. Si es algo de tocar, sí lo podemos utilizar con el presente continuo. Si es algo de sentir con las emociones, no lo podemos utilizar con el present continuous. Then we have hate, we have love, and we have sound. Because it is not like we can um, touch or uh, create an action without, um, with this kind of a verb. Now we are going to create a difference between the present continuous and be going to, because 
maybe it can be confused with this kind of um, a structure. So we are going to create here the difference between the present continuous and the going to. It says both going to and present continuous are used to talk about future actions and events that have some present reality. So for example, if we say that something is happening or going to happen, it is usually already decided or planned. Ambos, el going to y el presente continuo son usados para hablar acerca de acciones futuras y eventos que obviamente se van a llevar a cabo en el futuro que tienen que ver con la realidad del presente, o sea, que tienen que ver con el tiempo presente. Así que si vamos a, a decir que algo va a pasar o que puede llegar a pasar, es usualmente, ¿verdad? Ya lo hemos decidido o ya lo habíamos planeado. So here we have the specification for, for this um, difference, like, but in this case, it's not difference. It is like a comparison between um, the uh, going to and the present continuous. So we have here that the going to and the present continuous are used to talk about future actions, both of them. I go are used to talk about this kind of um, times because we are going to talk about the future. Uh, but in this case, these events that are going to happen in the future has some reality in the present because maybe they begin in the present and then they are going to be developed in, in the future. But if we say that something is happening or going to happen, it is usually decided or planned in the, the present. Then we have some examples. 
And we have example number one. We are going to get new windows. Number two, we are getting new windows. So in this one, we are using the going to, and in the second one, we are using the present continuous. So as you can see, both sentences express nearly the same idea. Both present continuous and be going can be used to express the same idea. In some cases, there are difference of meaning. The present continuous tense is common with verb of movement. So we are going to create the difference right here. So common with birds of movement. So we have some examples. Are you coming to the party? I mean. It says that the present continuous tense is mainly used to talk about personal arrangements and fixed plans. Be going to can also be used to express the same idea. However, it puts an extra emphasis on the idea or intention. So we have here this almost the same sentence. I am going to get a new job and I am getting a new job. <clears throat> in the first one, I intend to get a new job. In this case, I am going to get a new job. It is not something um, that it's going to happen in reality. It's maybe something that I want uh, to happen. And in the, in the second one, I am getting a new job. 
it is already decided. Um, and this is like something that I know that is going to happen. Para esto, utilizamos el be going to y el present continuous para hablar de, eh, de este tipo de cosas, ¿verdad? De cosas que van a pasar o que ya están decididas. And in this case, we have this word arrangement, que son los arreglos, los preparativos, los acuerdos, ¿verdad? Que ya se tomaron. O lo, las cosas que nosotros ya tenemos hechas. Eh, be going to, it's also used to express the same idea, but in this case, it puts extra emphasis on the idea of intention. So, be going to va a poner más énfasis en lo que es la, um, la idea de intención. So, in that case, be going to is talking about intention. Be going to is sobre intenciones, algo que no está seguro que va a pasar. And the present continuous, it is talking about something that is uh, certain in that case. Eh, algo que ya va a pasar, que ya está arreglado, que ya está preparado, que va a pasar de esa manera. Then, we have another example and it says, What are you doing this evening? And in this case, it is a question that is about arrangement. They are maybe trying to uh, get a, a meeting, uh, a, I don't know, watching a movie or something like that. So we have in the, in the example number four, are you going to do anything about that letter that you received from the civic authorities? In this case, it is a question about the intention of the listeners. So in the first one and the number three, it is talking about something that is not certain, but in this case, in the number four is something that you already have because you have a letter. And it's asking for the things that you are going to do with that letter. En la primera, en la número tres, tenemos algo que se va a planear, ¿verdad? No es algo que ya esté arreglado o ya esté planeado, sino que se está preguntando qué vas a hacer esta tarde. En el número cuatro, es algo que ya tenemos una base, because we have a letter, ya tenemos una carta que ha llegado de las autoridades civiles. So in that case, it's asking for the action that we are going to perform in that case. We have another two examples that are the last ones. And it says, I am seeing Peter. Tomorrow. And it says that the emphasis is on the arrangement that already exists. In this case, we are using the present continuous, and in this case, it's something that we have done. Esta ya es una eh, situación que ya tiene un arreglo, que ya se planeó desde antes, y es que vamos a ver a Peter mañana. Ya está hecho, ya está arreglado. Number six, I am going to ask. Him to stop. So in this case, in the last sentence is talking about the intention of the speaker. So in this case, it is not talking about that something is certain. 
In this case, it's talking about that the, um, the speaker wants to do something. Voy a hablar con él y le, para que eh, pare, ¿verdad? De prestar mi carro. It's an intention. It is not something that is going to happen or is something that is certain. Then we have events that are outside people's control. In this case, we do, we do not normally use the present continuous to talk about events that are outside people's control. So in this case, it is not normal to talk about or to use this structure with things that are out of our control. And we have some examples. And we have number one, it says, it is going to snow before long. Va a nevar después de tanto, that's the, the sentence. And it says, not it is snowing before long. In this case, it is going to snow, something that is not certain. In este caso, vamos a utilizar el going to porque no es algo que está seguro que vaya a pasar. No podemos asegurar porque no sabemos exactamente si va a pasar o no. Then, look at the sky, it's going to rain. And number three, prices are going to fall. So in, that, in those cases in which we're not having the control of the situation, we are not going to use this structure because it is not certain. Siempre que ten, no tengamos el control de una situación o es algo que no esté en nuestro poder, eh, que esté fuera de nuestro control, no vamos a utilizar eh, la estructura, ¿verdad? Sino que vamos a utilizar el going to, porque es algo que no está seguro que vaya a pasar, pero nosotros queremos eh, eh, hablar sobre esa, esa parte. The sentences, it is raining and prices eh, are falling, have altogether different eh, meanings. They are used to talk about action or situation that are in progress now. Be going to is only used to talk about future events. So, en esa parte estamos hablando que eh, tenemos, ¿verdad? Eh, diferentes eh, significados. Y son usados para hablar sobre acciones y situaciones que están en, en proceso o que llevan un progreso ahora. Be going to is only used to talk about future events. En este caso, el be going to solo es para las acciones futuras. So we are going to do just a review, a quick review of this topic because it is um, important to represent or to understand what is uh, this topic about. So we are going to do the review of this uh, structure because it's very important that we have um, the uh, knowledge of this, um, of this thing. So we have here that the present continuous is a structure that is talking about the present. So in this case, we have that this verb tense indicates that the action or condition is happening now. 
frequently and may continue in the future. Algo bastante eh, específico. Sabemos que esta estructura es una acción o condición que está pasando en este momento, frecuente y que puede continuar en el futuro. That's very simple. Then we have that the present continuous formula is the verb to be in, 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 the, in the specific uh, way to write with the pronouns is um, an R plus the verb in present participle. It's, um, this is something that we already have because we have this kind of a list. Esta es una lista que ya tenemos nosotros sobre los verbos. ¿Cuál es el um, verbo en presente participio? That's, uh, we have a list of these kind of verbs. Then uh, we have the examples. Also, it is talking about that uh, we have in the present continuous tense, that is a way to convey any action or condition uh, that is happening right now, frequently and maybe ongoing. Es la especificación, ¿verdad? La más importante, la que tenemos nosotros ahí, que es una acción o condición que está pasando en este momento y que eh, es frecuente. And at the same time, it's something that is going to um, happen in the future. Es algo que va a seguir pasando. Then we have it at energy and action to write in and it, it effect helps reader understand when the action is happening. So in that case, um, we have that. Uh, vamos a agregar energía a la acción de la escritura. En este caso estamos hablando de la escritura. And we are uh, going to understand that the reader knows when the action is happening. And in this case, we were talking about something very important. En esta, en esta parte estábamos hablando que eh, la persona tiene que saber cómo se lleva a cabo esta eh, acción. In this case, we are talking about the uh, structure of the things that we are going to develop. We have some uh, actions that it's happening right now and we need to mark that um, for example that uh, points or the, that part because I am performing something in the past but now I am doing another thing and in the future I'm going to do something different and the person that is listening the situation or the person that is reading the situation needs to know uh, what are the specific steps to be in that place. Siempre vamos a necesitar explicarle o darle información a la persona que escucha o que lee de las acciones que se llevan a cabo. En este caso, uh, with this structure, something that began in the past, maybe es algo que empezó en el pasado, Está pasando ahora y va a continuar en algún punto del futuro. Pero la persona que está escuchando, la persona que está leyendo esa información necesita saber cómo llegamos a esa parte. If we don't know we, um, how can we get to that place, that is not the point to use this kind of tense. Then it says also, let's see. that we have in a specific uh, or some specifications for this tense. And in this case, it says when we need to use this uh, tense. And that is something that we were uh, talking, uh, I think that is very clear. That is not something that we need to, to remark a lot because we already have uh, this uh, information and it says that we have two different kinds or different types of verbs. And in this case, we have the stated verbs and we have the dynamic verbs. That is a very basic, it's something that we already study because we already uh, have talked about the stated verbs uh, before, but this is just a review. Para este caso, solo estamos haciendo lo que es el resumen de esta parte. 
Y eh, decíamos, ¿verdad? Que tenemos estos dos eh, tipos de verbos, los eh, dinámicos y los estáticos. That's the, 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 the meaning of this word in Spanish. So, in this case, los dinámicos son aquellos eh, verbos que nos hablan de eh, acciones que se realizan. Y son aquellos verbos que podemos utilizar, ¿verdad? Con esta estructura. Eh, verbs like jump, run, eat, sing, fly, and all of that, we can use with the structure. And the eh, verbs that are in, like, Talking about feelings or emotions, we cannot use with this structure because it will sound very um, strange with this kind of a structure. So, para esa parte, solo los que son eh, verbos dinámicos o que son verbos de acción, que ya sabemos que la mayoría son verbos de acción, eh, lo vamos a utilizar con esta estructura. Si no son verbos de acción, no los podemos utilizar porque suenan o no tienen sentido, ¿verdad? No se pueden utilizar con ese tipo de eh, estructura y por eso agregamos ya a esta parte el be going to. Maybe you were uh, thinking why we were talking about be going to because of that kind of action or because of that kind of verbs. In that case, when we are not going to use Uh, these stated verbs, we are going to use it, this kind of a structure. It is almost the same, but we were learning that they be going to add something else to the structure. In este caso, estamos eh, diciendo que el be going to um, nos va a agregar un poco más de información o énfasis a lo que estamos um, Uh, hablando de, de las acciones, because it is not something certain that it will happen. No es algo seguro que vaya a pasar en ninguno de los tiempos, in present or in, um, in future. So in this case, when we are not going to use the stated verbs with the TS structure, we are going to use this, um, this be going to. And we were saying the difference between the be going to and the structure and in which cases we are going to use these structures. And that's the, um, the information that we were seeing with this uh, topic. So in this case, we are going to have this part Um, we have this part of this a, 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 a structure like this. It is not very complicated because we already know what are the specifications for these uh, tenses. So, esa es la parte final de esta parte de, el, el, de lo que es la estructura. Hasta esta parte is not very complicated because we have the, the structures for these um, this kind of uh, tenses. And uh, something that we want to add to this uh, specification for this uh, topic is that we have different tenses in, in past, in present, and in future. We have four for each of them. But in this case, we're just um, studying this one, and that is this uh, present continuous. But then in the future, you are going to uh, learn more about this information. So, also, we are going to uh, see something about some specific verbs. We are going to um, use these verbs. So, let me show you what are the verbs that we are going to use. We have these verbs, tell and ask. When we are talking about these verbs, we are knowing that we are going to talk about uh, the production of the language. In this case, we are going to create, we are going to speak, and we are going to uh, produce the language. In this topic, we are going to see these two verbs, but uh, 
in this case, we are going to create something with these verbs. Tenemos dos verbos. Simplemente tenemos dos verbos. In this case, we have tell and we have ask. Decir y preguntar. In this case, two different actions that um, create conversations. These verbs can help us to create conversations. The first one, tell, it's the action of telling, to expressing, to give information. And the second one is the action to ask for um, a specific information to create a database or to have clues. El primero es para hablar, para expresar, para decir. Y el segundo es para preguntar, para adquirir información, the acquisition of the information. But in this case, what are, are we seeing these verbs in this part? Because we are going to learn how to um, make calls and answer those calls. This action maybe can be very simple. That is the action of calling. But in some cases are very complicated because we need to give information and to ask for information or for maybe we are going to um, ask for a delivery. And in this case, we are going to create, we are going to see how can we uh, establish conversation with people through uh, the cell phone or through the phone. So in that case, we are going to use these verbs to uh, create conversations and to uh, use the phone and have phone calls. And um, it's very uh, basic to know how to uh, make phone calls. Maybe you can think that it's very simple. That is a very simple action because we are in a technology um, time, but there are some people that cannot uh, create that kind of conversation. Um, there are some people that cannot uh, have this kind of conversation with uh, some others because they feel awkward when they are talking with uh, some people on the phone. And in this case, it is not uh, having a conversation with someone in Spanish. In this case, it's having a conversation with someone in English. And we need to have or to create a vocabulary of the words that we are going to use when we are uh, giving a phone call. And in this case, when we are talking about vocabulary, we are going to create different vocabulary for different situations or different uh, scenarios. Um, maybe you are going to talk about with someone about technology. Maybe you are going to talk about with someone about food, uh, about uh, medicine, about your job or animals or something like that. In este caso, de las phone calls, de las llamadas, de las conversaciones a través del teléfono, es necesario que vayamos creando nosotros eh, vocabularios que nos puedan ayudar a hacer este proceso mucho más fácil. Eh, sabemos que tenemos diferentes escenarios, diferentes eh, situaciones en las cuales nosotros necesitamos hacer este tipo de llamadas. Y no es lo mismo utilizar el, el, el vocabulario básico que ya tenemos con un área en específico, because we need to know um, maybe basic um, vocabulary about that specific topic. And that are the um, technical uh, language that we are going to use because it's very for us to have this kind of vocabulary. So para eso vamos a crear vocabularios de palabras básicas de diferentes um, temas o de diferentes um, how can I say, categories, de diferentes categorías que podemos utilizar para las llamadas. But in that case, we are going to create those vocabularies uh, tomorrow because now it's almost time to end the session. So tomorrow we are going to see more about the verbs
tell and ask and more about uh, the phone calls, maybe we can see some ad advices for um, doing these uh, phone calls. Also, we are going to create some vocabularies of technical uh, language that we are going to use. Uh, something that we need to know uh, right now is that we have left three days. We have three sessions more to end this course. So if you are not um, on a date with the activities in the platform, you need to do it in these days because it is almost time to end this course. If you are not ending in these days, you are not going to have your certification and you are not going uh, to continue with your um, process. But now you have time to end the exercise in the platform. You need to work in the platform to end these exercises. And then you are going to, go to end this course very easy. So uh, for the ones that have end the exercises on the platform, congratulations because you have already done your work. But for those that doesn't uh, have ending at the exercise you need to do it in these days because we are almost done with this course so if you are having troubles with the exercise that you can ask for help and then you are going to end the exercises in the platform so now we are going to end this session here tomorrow we are going to see another topics and have a good night and see you tomorrow Teacher, Teacher tomorrow. I have a question. Thank you tomorrow. I have a question. Tell me. I need to, to confirm if I understand the previous topic mm -hmm. uh, about going to um, present continuous. Okay. That, that GitLab for I use the structure is mm -hmm. if I I know the the action in the sentences is arrangement. In which in which part? In the in the difference in the last part when we were uh, talking about the difference between the going to and the in the con the the structure. In la última parte sí se trataba de los arrangements. Sí se trataba de los arreglos. Porque el, la, la estructura, cuando estamos utilizando la estructura de, el, de este tense, sí es algo que ya se arregló, pero el going to es algo que no está eh, seguro que vaya a pasar. Así que la estructura sí es para algo que ya se arregló, una cita eh, que vamos a hacer algo el siguiente día, algo que ya tenemos seguro. Pero el going, el going to, no. El going to es para algo que yo quiero que pase, pero no estoy segura de que vaya a pasar. O sea que podría, podría decir, Richard, que esa sería como mi pauta para saber cuándo sí voy a usar esa estructura, ¿verdad? Exactamente, porque si yo ya tengo algo seguro, por ejemplo, yo ya tengo una cita con el doctor, yo voy a utilizar el, el, el tense, el present continuous. Pero si yo... Simplemente quiero saber qué voy a hacer mañana en la tarde. Voy a utilizar el going to porque no tengo nada seguro para ese momento. Ok. Thank you for your Teacher. Okay. Good night. Uh, when is the end of the module? The end of the course. Yes. It's the next, let me see, in Tuesday. The next Tuesday. You, have just three more days because we're going to have another session tomorrow. Then the next week we have just two more days. Así que vamos a terminar el día martes. Solo okay. tenemos tres días más de este curso. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good night. Thank you, you good night. See you tomorrow.